Hello, this is Stephen Green, and I am doing the presentation on the OWASP top 10 topic A7, which is missing function level access control. Uh, so let's get started. Our agenda and our overview first. Introduction to the topic A7, which is the missing function level access control. Explanation of missing function level access control and authorization how this vulnerability occurs, ease of the attack, examples of attacks, are you vulnerable and how to know, and defenses to this vulnerability. Okay, as mentioned, we're reviewing the OWASP top 10. Uh, this is the 2013 list. OWASP it stands for Open Web Application Security Project and it lists the top 10 web application security risks. And we're doing A7, Missing Function Level Access Control. And you can see the screen print there from the OWASP website. Uh, missing Function Level Access Control. Most web applications verify function level access rights before making that function functionality visible in the UI. However, applications need to perform the same access control checks on the server when each function is accessed. If requests are not verified, attackers will be able to forge requests in order to access functionality without proper authorization. And we're going to uh, look a little further into that. Okay, and the first thing I wanted to do is take a look at the 2013 list versus the 2010 list. And you'll see there, uh, there's a few changes, but specifically for this topic, in 2010, it was known as the failure to restrict URL access. And in light of some of the attacks and uh, the parameters involved, they decided to change that terminology and it's now known as missing function level access control. So what is missing function level access control? Any user with network access can send requests to that server. So if you go to a URL and you type in www.example.com uh, and then you click on an application or a link or something within that page, uh, the URL is going to change and you can see that in this instance that I have here, it changed to app equals page zero. And it's just a random page uh, uh, URL information. Uh, any attacker can simply change that URL or parameter to reach an unauthorized functionality. So you can see what I did there with the example, uh, www.example.com, and there's an administrative function um, that I called in, uh, admin equals control. And you can see by simply changing that information, you're able to get into the administrative access. So once you do that, that does grant them access to privileged functions. And you can see just an example of a welcome to the website administration tool, which could just be an example of what could be accessed. And without proper verifications of rights, you get the missing function level access control. So it does come down to verification and authorization as well. Now authorization, which we're going to talk about here, it ensures that the authenticated user has the appropriate privileges to view and control resources. So, for example, access. Only authorized users can perform certain actions, control access to protected resources, and prevented privilege escalation attacks. Authorization uh, basically is a breakdown in or misconfigured authorization, and that's going to equal your missing function level access control. So pretty easy, but that's, uh, that's bad news. And how does this occur? Well, applications don't always protect the application functions properly. Um, and this results from insufficient protection of the sensitive request handlers from within an application. So an application uh, may simply try to hide access to the sensitive actions, um, fail to enforce sufficient authorization, or maybe expose actions through a user-controlled request parameter. 
some of the common access control issues that uh, is ex that are experienced. You have all or nothing approach where all users have equal privileges. Security by obscurity, and I'm sure you've heard this before, is relying on security by simply hiding the path and hoping that it's not found, which is not a good uh, not a good way to do things. Shared accounts. Uh, where it makes it difficult to figure out if the administrator is being malicious or if it's an honest administrator. Uh, root login, so having all of your web and application processes ro running as root, we, we know that's not a good idea. Authent authentication, uh, many administrative interfaces only require a password for authentication. So if an attacker is able to get that password, they're able to get administrative interface functions, which is not good news either. And administrative interfaces uh, are usually not designed uh, to be as secure as the user level interfaces, generally just because administrators are considered to be trusted. And according to OWASP, the ease of attacks upon these applications, uh, it's very easy to uh, exploit this vulnerability uh, vulnerability and uh, I think we're going to see that in the examples and, and just the basic description of missing function level access control uh, shows you that, that it, that's true. So common attacks on access control. Uh, three types were identified. We have the vertical access control where you have a standard user is trying to move up to administrator functions. We have a horizontal access control and we'll see an example here in a little bit, but it's where a user has the same role as another user and attempts to access their private data. And thirdly, we have business login access control, which would be abuse of linked activities that collectively realize a business objective. So just having everything linked together, which would allow the attacker to expand into other areas. Now here we go, we're going to have a few examples. Uh, the first example we have, and you might have heard this before, it's called force browsing the URL. Uh, so you simply just go to, you go to a site and your, your URL is dis uh, displayed. You click on a link and within that URL you'll see the application and in the, you know the URL is going to change once you uh, reach out to that application page. So see you can, uh, I did app slash get app info. Uh, now, what the attacker would simply do would just be to go into that URL and at, uh, simply guess how to get into that URL to get the administrative functions. So here they, they're you know, taking a guess as admin underscore get app info, which if that was the way to get into that link, now the administrator access has been achieved by the attacker if the proper uh, safeguards are not set up within the system. So basically by doing this, the attacker has bypassed uh, having to log in as an administrator to actually get to the administrator functions on this Get App Info, and it does happen. Our second example is going to look at horizontal access attacks. Uh, basically a user would go to a site, uh, they're going to log in with their authorization, uh, to use the site, to use the application and their resources. And you can see here that in this instance, the URL did display the user ID, and it gives them a user ID of 21775. Now you see this in the URL, and the attacker is thinking, you know, what if I change that ID number to maybe another ID of another uh, user and see if I could get in? Well, basically, if the proper safeguards are not in place, because the user was able to get in using their authorization, they're actually able to view other users' information. Um, so you can see just by simply changing the user ID uh, that that user's ID, uh, user's information is now displayed and uh, the user's information has been compromised. So are you vulnerable? Several methods to determine if your site is vulnerable to this type of attack. Uh, attempt to access administrative components as a regular user. So don't log in as the admin. Just uh, go in as a regular user and attempt to get to those 
known administrative functions that you have set up within the website and just see if you're able to do that. Uh, you could also use a proxy and then browse the applications as the administrator and then try to access those restricted pages as a regular user as well. Uh, you can determine how administrators are authenticated in the application and within the coding and ensure that proper procedures are being enforced. And use of automated tools, and there's a bunch out there, but I do want to identify just two. Uh, one is dot, dot, pawn, or you can look at nick22. So preventing attacks, uh, you would want to use uh, an easy authorization module to invoke the rules. You don't want anything too complicated. Uh, using something easy makes it easy to understand and makes it uh, universal across uh, all of the applications. And don't hard code anything uh, as far as authorization. What you want to do is you want to use that authorization module to ensure uh, that the administrators are updating that appropriately and that they're auditing the roles and they're able to do it easily. So you don't want uh, you don't want the information to be convoluted. And by default, deny access. Uh, it seems like a given, but it's, it's probably something that's overlooked pretty often. Um, deny, 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 and then provide access as needed. Um, that's a better way to do things and a better way to control that authorization uh, process. So in ensure authorization is enforced in the controller or the business logic. You want to avoid assigning permissions on a per user basis. And you want to log all failed attempts to access restricted locations and review periodically. So in summary, we're going to look at missing function level, access control attacks. They are easy to perform, easy to prevent, somewhat easy to detect and the potential impact is pretty severe based upon what kinds of data are stored in the authorized areas. Uh, I did want to include a few discussion questions and what I'm going to do is I'm going to post those to the discussion area so after a few days and after everyone's had a chance to review this presentation and review the slide share presentation as well. I'm going to post these up in individual threads and I'd like to have everybody uh, take you know five or ten minutes and try to answer these and just provide your experiences here. So the first one we're going to look at is have you experienced this type of vulnerability in the wild? And if so, please provide examples of your experience and how it left you feeling knowing that it exists. Um, I, I think I've proven that it is a pretty easy uh, vulnerability and it's easy to access and to use. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried to do this, but I know I've personally tried um, with some websites and, it, and it's worked and it, it's kind of shocking that, you know, a, a website that maybe you trust or an application that you trust is uh, this open and uh, it kind of leaves a, a little bit uh, left to be desired on that website. So, yeah, if you have any of those experiences, I'd like to hear about them. Uh, second question is uh, the Common Weakness Enumeration website, uh, which lists a lot of uh, vulnerabilities uh, that are out there and that have been discovered. And it provides, all, it's basically a dictionary of the most common types of software weaknesses that have been found. Um, I'd like for... Uh, the reviewers to go to that website, find an attack that's relative to this topic, and I'm sure you're going to find some that are out there that are pretty close. Uh, describe the attack and also identify a detection, a detection method available so you can uh, define this vulnerability. And I've already gone to the site, so once you do find an attack, it, it gives you a pretty detailed listing of everything. And just like, uh, like everybody to review it, uh, find a vulnerability. Um, and find a, a detection method and just uh, give me like a one or two page, or excuse me, a one or two paragraph uh, summation of what they found there. Also, path traversal, which is a form of missing level, a missing function level access control. Um, I mentioned one tool earlier, the dot dot pawn, which was used to detect these types of attacks. Uh, 
can you find any additional tools that could be used? Also, I'd like you to provide a link and a brief overview of your findings. Um, you might be able to find some information relating to that in my resources and also uh, in the resource and reading list area. Okay, here are some of the references that I used. And finally, uh, I, I did uh, 10 links here. This is my resource and reading list. If you're definitely interested in more of this and you want to look at it a little bit further, and this again, this would help with the discussion questions that I'm going to be posting, uh, I would encourage you to go to some of these sites. Um, one is the, the Bounty uh, GitHub. It's uh, for the security side. They offer uh, a point value for um, people going to find uh, vulnerabilities and bringing them back to uh, GitHub to expose them. So that's kind of interesting. I posted a few YouTube videos as well, as well that go over this topic. Uh, there's a forced browsing, uh, a WASP link. Uh, there's a testing project link. Uh, you'll see Nick2 uh, dot dot pawn. And I did an article as well on application security. And it says we still have a long way to go. And I thought it was a pretty interesting article. So I wanted to include that. But uh, that does resume my, um, it does conclude, excuse me, my presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I look forward to getting feedback from everyone. Thank you.